Hello again. Um, in this topic, uh, we will talk about health policy in the United States, which is chapter 13 of your text. Uh, make sure to do your readings first, read uh, the entirety of chapter 13. Um, and in this session, uh, our last session before your finals, we will also talk about the Affordable Care Act, and uh, that will be later on in this lesson. But first, before we could understand the Affordable Care Act, we have to talk about health policies in the United States. Um, it has several aspects to it that we first need to discuss uh, before we proceed with the lesson. So first and foremost, let's talk about health policy. Um, health policies cannot be created without first creating public policies. So let's revert back to public policies. Public policies are authoritative decisions made in the three branches of the government. The first branch, of course, that we're going to talk about is the legislative branch, which is also known as the congressional branch of the government. These are the two houses of Congress in Washington, and they are responsible for making the laws of the land. There is actually a um, more uh, concise and expanded discussion of the role of the legislative body uh, of the branch of the federal government that is responsible for creating public policies and that will be towards the end of the lesson. The second uh, branch that public policies also come from would be the executive or the presidential branch of the government. And the third one would be the judicial uh, branch of the government, which is also the Supreme Court. All public policies are created to either direct or to influence how people act how their behaviors uh, should be carried out, and also to influence the decisions of others. So one perfect example here is the executive order by Governor Cuomo regarding social distancing, for instance. That basically influences behaviors and social distancing pertaining to uh, the response we have for the COVID-19 pandemic. So, like I said, we will have a more focused discussion on the legislative branch of the government. Now, I'm going to give you two examples. I mean, I'm going to give you examples for each of these two branches, how public policies emanate from them. So, for the executive branch of the government, uh, the public policies that emanate uh, from this particular branch, which comes from precedent, are through what we call executive orders and they emanate directly from the president now they become public policies of course if they are not challenged as unconstitutional so this current administration has had some executive orders that have been challenged in court because of constitutionality specifically on uh, immigration uh, things about policies about immigration um, executive orders are quite encompassing and could be really powerful. Um, it has uh, great implications for health policies, but they are through uh, what we call policies that are called executive orders that are um, signed off by the president. The judicial branch of the government does not necessarily create directives or laws uh, for people to do or follow. Um, the public policies that emanate from the Supreme Court, for instance, is almost reactionary. It's either affirming a law that came from the legislative branch or affirming an executive order that came from the executive branch. So one such example that greatly impacts health policy, for instance, would be um, 
the legality or constitutionality of uh, termination of pregnancy, other, otherwise known as abortion. So uh, it's the decision of the Supreme Court in 1975, Roe versus Wade, that practically legalized termination of pregnancy uh, in the country, in the United States. I'm saying that that decision did not necessarily say that termination of pregnancy is henceforth legal and constitutional in this country. Basically, the decision was based on the arguments presented to the Supreme Court. And the arguments uh, that were brought basically in favor of abortion was based upon the woman's right to her own body, the woman's right to the privacy of her own body. And the ruling basically said that termination of pregnancy is part of that. So in effect, it legalized abortion in this country. Of course, there are several legislations in the states, in each state that are challenging this or sort of amending um, this health policy. So going specifically to health policy now, talking about health policy. So health policies are those policies that come from public policies, but is specifically meant to influence the health of a given population. So it's the collection of principles that regulate how we distribute resources, how we provide services. Um, it is also uh, greatly impacted by politics, uh, unfortunately or fortunately, whichever way you look at it. And often health policies come from uh, social policies or public policies that were enacted by the government, uh, especially through legislation or through executive order. Uh, New York City is uh, one prime example for this, for instance. Uh, there are things, policies that emanate from the city government of New York that are related to health policies. There were attempts about controlling sugary beverages, for instance, policies on restrictions on tobacco use and tobacco smoking, access to tobacco products in terms of uh, legal age to buy them, um, access to alcohol for underaged, for instance, things like that, even uh, in terms of caloric count, uh, informing people of the caloric count of whatever they buy. Uh, also the prohibition or um, basically directing uh, foods that are prepared that are available to the public to have reduced or none at all uh, trans fatty oils uh, being used in the preparation thereof. So health policies can, can affect groups or classes of individuals. Um, we belong to different groups, interest groups, and we will talk more about that when, uh, when you actually get to the lesson on critical health policy issues. So there are different forms of health policies. First is health policy as a regulatory tool. So regulatory tool is just that. It's a regulation. It tells you what to do. It prescribes something and therefore it controls the behavior uh, of a certain group of individuals or the entire population as a whole. The other is as an allocative tool. The allocative tool comes in hand uh, in terms of giving direct provision of services, uh, healthcare services to a group of individuals or organizations or a specific population. Now, there are two main types of allocation. So you could either be uh, using it as a distributive tool or as, re as a redistributive tool. So distributive uh, health policies are those policies that spread benefits throughout society. It literally provides um, health services. For instance, Medicaid, it's a policy that spreads benefits throughout society targeting a specific population, which is 
um, those that meet a certain threshold for income uh, targets the which actually targets the poor members of society those with low income now redistributive is when you take resources from one group and distribute it dis distribute it to another group or you take resources or funding or budgets, for instance, and use it to fund other programs that will benefit other specific groups of population. It's like saying, let's reduce the budget for education because we will use it for Medicaid, something like that. 